Hello there everyone and welcome to my settings video for Cricut 22. I'm going to show you everything that I do in Cricut 22, all of the settings that I have and all of the things that you can do too so that you have the same settings that I play on uh, because my game might look different to yours in how it works. I'm going to pause real quick here and just say apologies for how long this video is. There's just a lot of settings to cover. So first of all, I'm just going to quickly jump into a game to give you guys a few things as to what I do and the settings that I have. A lot of you, when you see me play this test match or test matches, you wanna see the the settings that I use in the broadcast camera angles and things like that. So we're gonna get into that. Or oh, when I'm playing the Big Bash, similar sort of thing. You'll notice a pitch marker here. That's black. The ball marker is white, which probably isn't the best for white ball cricket. But essentially, those are also things that I have customized uh, as well as the thing that, you know, sort of is on the screen. So these are the things we're going to talk about, how you can get that, uh, and everything like that. So essentially, to get all of these settings, we want to start off in the main menu. That's right. We don't want to go into a game. We don't want to do any of that. We want to go to the menu. And if you're playing on PlayStation, you want to press the, the touchpad. That will open up your settings uh, on Xbox. I'm not sure what button it is. But you see it down in the bottom left there, whatever that button is, it says settings for you. Uh, and if you're on PC, same sort of thing, just whatever button it is that is the settings button. Okay, so now that I've teleported to the other side of the screen, uh, <laughs> this is what we're going to look at here. Uh, the first sort of settings are the gameplay ones. Uh, you can go through and see what I've got turned on and off. Uh, the emotes offline, definitely turn that one off. Otherwise, when you whenever you move the right stick around, it kind of comes up um, and is annoying. For that, the radar tooltips, they're the buttons that, that come up around your fielding radar that says like, oh, you press X for attacking shot or whatever. You can turn those off if you've uh, got the hang of the controls. Uh, but pretty much these are the main ones uh, that I like to have turned on. Wickets runs obviously is the score format in Australia. Uh, if you are not in Australia, pretty much everywhere else uses runs and then wickets first. Uh, and metric is obviously kilometers per hour, imperial miles per hour. So we're on the metric system. As for the controls that I use, uh, these are the controls that I use for everything. So we've got uh, the batting controls, we use the arcade, which means we use uh, the face buttons, uh, the X square, triangle and circle to be able to hit the ball. For me, I just end the, I guess the left analog stick to aim. This is the, the reason I use this is because I feel like uh, in previous games, and I haven't really tried it in this one, but the pro controls, uh, they're not as responsive when you hit the button or when you push the stick to when you need to be able to do it. So it can ruin your timing a little bit. Um, and that's why I prefer using the arcade ones uh, over the pro ones for batting. Pace bowling, I like using the pro controls for that. Something that has been sort of standard through these games for a while. That's pretty much why I use that one. And it just makes more sense. I think if you have used the arcade ones, which are the new controls on Cricket 22, then that's maybe like a good entry point for you. Uh, but eventually, you know, try and move to the pro controls. It is just a bit easier, I think. Um, and then you can get used to the aftertouch and stuff like that as well. And it's easier to do things quickly using the pro controls for your pace bowling. As for the spin bowling, I use the standard controls. These ones, you don't have to have the silly spin, the stick. I haven't tried the arcade ones on this where you aim it. Or the pro ones, actually. I haven't tried the pro ones uh, which is the spin of the stick, and then you've got to aim it, and it's it's a mess, really. Um, and that's why the standard is the best ones, I think, uh, to be using for spin bowling. Obviously, I'm doing a spin bowling career mode, uh, and it's just the easiest. It makes the most sense. And again, it's just a more fun way to play. So it, I'm not about having the most complicated game to play. I just want to have the, me the most fun cricket experience I can, and that's why I've got these controls. Uh, make sure your batting and bowling control directions as well are camera relative because then when you do change the cameras, at least you won't have to invert any of your uh, controls. For the cameras, this is what I use when I am playing as a team. So we've got the broadcast view. Uh, career mode's a bit different because I use the uh, I use the you know the behind the batsman camera for that one, uh, which I think is batting close. Uh, that I use for career mode. As for when I'm playing as a team, we use broadcast one for bowling and batting, and then fielding and running, we use broadcast three. So that way it's not a real jolty look, but that's the best thing I can do with that. 
Uh, I turn off the ProCam catching camera. Uh, it's probably not as good in this one when you turn it off because it still gives you sort of like a side-on view of who's taking the catch. Um, whereas in the previous game, it was a little bit better and it didn't take away from the broadcast look as much. So um, you can probably have that turned on. That's just whether you want the catching in first person or not. Um, but as I said, it's probably still, it could probably still use a little bit of work. Uh, these versus ones, I haven't changed anything in there, but I probably should just turn those to broadcast as well. Uh, broadcast one and broadcast three, because that is when you're playing like local multiplayer against, you know, your friend on the couch. Uh, all the audio settings, there's nothing really too much I change here. I just turn off the menu music and the commentary. Uh, this is a bit annoying because in career mode, if you have the commentary turned off, then you can't actually hear the cutscenes. Um, so hopefully they do fix that. But um, that is something that I will have to turn on and off during career mode if I want to hear the dialogue that comes out of the cutscenes. Otherwise, everything else is as default for here. This is just if you don't like any of the songs, you can turn them off. Uh, same with if you don't like a particular commentator, you can turn them off as well. Now to the accessibility tab. This is probably the main one in terms of uh, how we change our ball indicator, our length indicator. And this will also be impacted by our difficulty as well. So for me, I don't like having different colors for the good length, the full length, or the short length. That way, it just gives it a little bit more of a challenge, and really, you have to watch the ball and where it's pitched. Uh, so these ones, I just put them all to white. So these originally are like blue, yellow, green, and red. Uh, but for me, as I said, I just turn them all down to... Uh, you need to have the bottom one to, all the way to the right, and the middle one all the way to the left. So we go down to the second layer, all the way to the left, bottom one, all the way to the right. And that way we get that white color. So in case you didn't work that out, that's the color that is around the ball when the bowler bowls it. So at that point, uh, yeah, if you're playing and you got used to the different colors, uh, it's, it's another bit of a challenge to turn those off and, and get rid of those. Then for the generic pitch marker color, I have that as black, which means we're always gonna have our pitch marker black uh, on the pitch. Sometimes the pitch marker doesn't appear. I think that's a bit of a bug. Uh, but for the rest of the time, uh, it does disappear as black on the screen. And that's when you'll get that pitch marker uh, when you're batting uh, that will show you exactly where the ball is going to land. And that's the sort of trade-off I get for not knowing what color the ball is when it comes in, but knowing where it's going to pitch. You can change that as well if you'd like, uh, but that's just the way I use. Uh, then the fielding ball color, that's the color that is around the ball when it's in the field. Red's just easy. It contrasts against the green. Nice and easy to see. Uh, all of this other stuff, I really don't know what it does because there's no real descriptions. The field radar stuff, uh, I just don't use it. it. It Like, whatever it is, as default, I'm happy to keep it as that. Okay, so that's all of our gen general settings done. We want to go back into the settings from the menu and we want to go to our custom difficulties. So here we are at our epic difficulty, everyone. Welcome back to it. It has been too long. I've made a few adjustments to how it works. With the AI, we want them to be on pretty much legend. I've turned their run rate down slightly. Uh, when I am playing test matches, this is really the main thing that I change. So if I'm playing a test, I almost turn it down to 10, but they still hit at like five and over, which is really annoying. Um, but like sort of 20 or 10 uh, is what I think I used for the test championship. But otherwise, I just have it as 40 um, because it's just a bit less. And I haven't really changed any of the other stuff here. Um, so that's that's all left as 50 at the moment. Maybe I'll play around with it a little bit, uh, but that's what I use it for now. Bowling settings, uh, I play on hard. The reason for this and not hardest is because hardest is just too insane. The, the input for the timing is almost so ridiculous. It's just frustrating and not fun. Um, and if you do play on hardest, well done to you. But I just don't think it's the best experience. I think if you're looking for a challenge, but something that isn't playing against you, hard is the best way to do that. Uh, and these are sort of the timing windows. I, I don't think I've changed any of these. Um, and they're pretty much exactly what they are at default. As for batting, I haven't seen the ball go through the bat at all uh, playing this game, but generally these were the settings that allowed me to not have that happen in the previous game. So if you have played on hardest and you have seen the ball go through the bat, maybe time to switch it up a little bit. Base of hardest, we need footwork. We don't have shot replacement on uh, because then this will sort of create weird things with your shots and not getting the right ones that you'd like. Um, and then these are essentially the settings that we use 
uh, with lots of 90s and 10s compared to 100s and zeros um, for our hardest shot timing here. And I'm not really gonna talk too much about them, but I'm just gonna scroll through. If you wanna emulate this, uh, feel free to pause the video at any point and sort of go through here as well and fix up whatever it is you want. The fielding, I don't think I've done anything to the fielding because I just have it on hardest as per normal. I can change my fielding here for uh, for my custom difficulty, but I don't actually have it as my custom difficulty. I would just have it as the hardest settings anyway. Um, these are kind of fine uh, for what it is, the fielding. It doesn't change any of the throws and the backing up, which uh, doesn't help at all. Uh, as for the physics, I haven't done too many changes to this, but I feel like probably people will. Uh, and this is just depending on what you're looking for as well. I think the main one people will be looking for is to increase this uh, pace bowling visual speed. Now there's no description. It looks like it's supposed to have one, uh, as you can see above my head at the moment, but it's like looking for a, a, a text thing that doesn't actually exist somewhere or it's supposed to exist, but it doesn't give us the thing. Uh, so I'll give you the description of what it actually does. So this setting changes the speed of how quickly the ball moves through the air. So the visual speed is how quick it actually is versus what comes up on the radar. So the radar might say 150, 150 kilometers an hour, but if you've got it at like 10 or zero, it could still go slow through the air. If you turn this up, I've got it at 60, uh, it goes a bit quicker. So then you could have like a you know 100 kilometer per hour ball and it would still just zip through. So obviously turning this up makes it a little bit more challenging because it means the ball's coming at you quicker. So that's why I've got this turned up slightly. Uh, as for the umpiring, nothing changes there for me uh, because at the end of the day, you're not influencing the actual umpiring decisions. Those settings are done in the umpire settings as well. All right, we're almost done, but there is a couple of settings you actually have to be in the game to change. We're gonna go in game and change those now. Okay, so I wanna show you what setting we're gonna change right now. You see how we've got the white over the ball and the pitch mark is black? That's the setting we're gonna change right now. So what you wanna do, pause your game, go to the general settings. This is where we're looking. Now, if you've still got random colors coming up over your uh, pitch marker and your pitch marker length display, this is the setting you wanna turn off. Now, these things can only be changed in game. I know what a pain in the ass. We wanna keep the pitch marker turned on and the pitch marker length display turned off. That will give us our black pitch marker on the, on the pitch every time. Uh, and we also, and that also should give us our uh, ball through the air with whatever color we've selected, which we had white for all of them. So that uh, is also the way to go. So that's the critical one to turn off in order to make that happen. The fielding and the bowling ball marker, you can leave those on uh, and the rest of it should be straight forward. Uh, the transparent batsman, I only have these turned off when I, turned on when I'm playing career mode. Otherwise, I will disable them if I am playing in this camera mode. Uh, but as you can see, the rest of these pretty much straightforward. It is a pain that some of these can only be changed in game compared to the fact that pretty much all of the other settings are in the menu. But yeah, critically, we wanna make sure that that pitch marker length displays off and the pitch marker is turned on. And then if you haven't changed your difficulty, you can make sure that you change all of these to either your epic difficulty or whatever you wanna call it if you haven't done that yet. Uh, or just whatever you find the, the most normal. Uh, so for me, my epic difficulty is the one that I use for all of that. Uh, so make sure you apply those to your profile as you're leaving. Uh, and then that's pretty much it, everyone. I don't think there's anything else you really need from me. You can now go in and play Cricket 22, however you like. I can be here, I can be down there. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but those are the settings that I use and I use it across all the formats. I do, as I said, adjust, adjust the run rate every now and then if I'm playing on uh, like a higher uh, on a test match compared to a T20. Uh, but outside of that, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully if you're struggling with your Cricket 22 experience, uh, this can make it either a bit more challenging or a bit more fun for you. Oh, I thought I was gonna absolutely tonk that ball. I wanted from me. Uh, but that's it. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.